Good morning, Church, and welcome to St. Joseph's. We are happy to know that you are joining us today, and we feel blessed by your presence. We begin our service by singing, Just As I Am. As we gather, it is our tradition to acknowledge that we are in the traditional territory of the Mississaugas of New Credit, the Anishinaabe peoples, on whose land and by whose waters we gather to worship, listen, learn, and share together in the name of our Creator, the Holy One of Blessing. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of our Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and the beast of his people on earth.
us pray. Almighty God, you sent your Holy Spirit to be the life and light of your church. Open our hearts to the riches of your grace, that we may bring forth the fruit of the Spirit in love, joy, and peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now for a reading of the word. A reading from the book of Genesis. Jacob settled in the land where his father had lived as an alien, the land of Canaan. This is the story of the family of Jacob. Joseph, being 17 years old, was shepherding the flock with his brothers. He was a helper to the sons of Bilhah and Zilpah, his father's wives. And Joseph brought a bad report of them to, his, to their father. Now Israel loved Joseph more than any of his other children, because he was the son of his old age. And he had made him a long robe with sleeves. But when his brothers saw that their father loved him more than all his brothers, they hated him and could not speak peaceably to him. Now his brothers went to pasture their father's flock near Shechem. And Israel said to Joseph, Are not your brothers pasturing the flock at Shechem? Come, I will send you to them. He answered, Here I am. So he said to him, Go now, see if it is well with your brothers and with the flock, and bring word back to me. So he sent him from the valley of Hebron. He came to Shechem, and a man found him wandering in the fields. The man asked him, What are you seeking? I am seeking my brothers, he said. Tell me, please, where they are pasturing the flock. The man said, They have gone away, for I heard them say, Let us go to Dothan. So Joseph went after his brothers and found them at Dothan. They saw him from a distance, and before he came near to them, they conspired to kill him. They said to one another, Here comes this dreamer. Come now, let us kill him and throw him into one of the pits. Then we shall see that a wild animal has devoured him, and we shall see what will become of his dreams. But when Reuben heard it, he delivered him out of their hands, saying, Let us not take his life. Reuben said to them, Shed no blood, throw him into this pit here in the wilderness, but lay no hand on him, that he might rescue him out of their hand and restore him to his father. So when Joseph came to his brothers, they stripped him of his robe, the long robe with sleeves that he wore, and they took him and threw him into a pit. The pit was empty, there was no water in it. Then they sat down to eat, and looking up, they saw a caravan of Ishmaelites coming from Gilead with their camels carrying gum, balm and resin on their way to carry it down to Egypt. And Judas said to his brothers, What profit is it if we kill our brother and conceal his blood? Come, let us sell him to the Ishmaelites and not lay our hands on him, for he is our brother, our own flesh. And his brothers agreed. When some Midianite traders passed by, they drew Joseph up, lifting him out of the pit, and sold him to the Ishmaelites for 20 pieces of silver. And they took Joseph to Egypt. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 105. 
Give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the peoples. Sing to him, sing praises to him, and speak of all his marvelous works. Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Search for the Lord and his strength. Continually seek his face. Remember the marvels he has done, his wonders and the judgments of his mouth. O offspring of Abraham his servant, O children of Jacob his chosen. Then he called for a famine in the land and destroyed the supply of bread. He sent a man before him, Joseph, who was sold as a slave. They bruised his feet in feathers, his neck they put in an iron collar. Until his prediction came to pass, the word of the Lord tested him. The king sent and released him. The ruler of the peoples set him free. He set him as master over his household, as a ruler over all his possessions, to instruct his princes according to his will and to teach his elders wisdom. Hallelujah. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. Moses writes concerning the righteousness that comes from the law. Now the person who does these things, they will live by them. But the righteousness that comes from faith says, Do not say in your heart, Who will ascend into heaven? That is to bring Christ down. Or who will descend into the abyss? That is to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near you, on your lips and in your heart. That is the word of faith that we proclaim. Because if you confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For one believes with the heart and so is justified, and one confesses with the mouth and so is saved. The scripture says, no one who believes in him will be put to shame, for there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. The same Lord is Lord of all, and is generous to all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. But how are they to call on one in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in one of whom they have never heard? And how are they to hear without someone to proclaim him? And how are they to proclaim him unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. And also, and also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Immediately, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead to the other side, while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. But by this time, the boat, battered by the waves, was far from the land, for the wind was against them. And early in the morning, he came walking toward them on the sea. But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified, saying, It is a ghost. And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat, started walking on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he noticed the strong wind, he became frightened, and beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him, saying to him, You of little faith, why did you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind ceased, and those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God, the Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. This summer, the gospel passages have had a common thread. They are all conveying an invitation from Jesus, an invitation to the disciples when Jesus said, Come and follow me. An invitation to those overwhelmed by life. And Jesus says, come to me, all you who are weary and are heavy laden. An invitation to those who are hungry. When Jesus said to the disciples, bring them to me so that I can feed them. And today, an invitation to those in distress. As Jesus says to Peter, come to me. All of these invitations to come to Jesus during the times that we cannot manage on our own are important for us to hear. Because Jesus knows that we can't do it alone. And he wants us to know that he is there. It is through our faith in the power of Jesus Christ that we are restored, that we are made whole, that we are saved, that we're able to manage life with hope and reassurance. There's a lesson that Peter learned quickly in today's gospel. He had to admit that he could not do it on his own. But once he did, then real faith began to work in him. 
Our courage for living is rooted in an understanding that we do not stand on shaky ground or wade in murky waters all by ourselves. There is always the one there with an outstretched hand. In this familiar story of the stormy sea, Peter seems to see more in Jesus than the other disciples. He's front and center. And he even appears to challenge Jesus. If it really is you, command me to walk on water as well, to join you in this miracle of defying nature by walking on water. You know, I can't help wondering what possessed Peter to want to leave the boat in the first place. Were things so rocky, so fearsome, so far from shore on that boat? Was the boat filling with water? Was Peter trying to show off? Was he wanting a moment of glory in front of the other disciples? Was Jesus' personal presence so calming and so reassuring that Peter needed to be with Jesus? All we know is that Peter suddenly found himself out of the boat and walking on the water towards Jesus. But then he gets distracted. His attention turns to the wind and the water, and when he loses his focus, he begins to sink. And as he starts sinking in the water, as the water rose above his ankles and then up to his knees, he realized nothing else could save him. No one else could save him. And so he cries out, Lord, Lord, save me. Such a simple prayer. You know, if he had prayed a longer prayer, he would have been 29 feet underwater before he got his request out. But Peter got right to the core of his need. I think there's something in that prayer we can learn from. Not just the request, but the getting down to business and simply saying to Jesus, Lord, save me, because I have nowhere else to turn. And when he did, Jesus immediately reached out his hand and took a hold of him. Such is life for us, I think. We too will surely falter if we have not already done so. We too get distracted. We too will feel that we are drowning in the depths of our world's darkness. We too will surely feel that the chaotic waters of life are too treacherous for our tentative footsteps we too feel at times like we are sinking. But we discover from this story and other passages of Scripture that our doubts and fears can never really take us away from His care and concern for us. And that's important because sometimes that's all we have to hang on to as we cling to the side of our boats. Thank God we know who Jesus is and what saving help he offers. Thank God we know that there is always that outstretched hand when all we can feel is that sinking feeling. Thank God scripture keeps reminding us of that. There is uh, an old story told by sailors of how to climb the main sail to the crow's nest high above a wooden sailing ship. On old sailing ships, there's a tall main sail and the crow's nest is perched there at the very top of the highest mast. It's a scary enough climb to the crow's nest when the sea is smooth and calm. But it's a very frightening thing to do to climb to the top of the mast and into the crow's nest in the middle of a raging storm. The ship is swaying this direction and that. 
and the movement of the top of the mass sways even more, and the boat rocks back and forth, back and forth. The old sailors tell you, when climbing to the crow's nest in the middle of a raging storm, never look down, never look back. Never look back into the storm or you won't make it. Be aware of the storm all around you, of course, but don't look down into the storm or you will fall. Keep your eye on what is above. Look up. So it is with us. In the middle of the nasty storms of life, and the storms of life can be nasty, we need to keep our focus upward on God, up on the face of Christ, up on the strength and power of God, rather than on the storms. Keep your eyes up on the face of Christ. Keep your eyes on the outstretched hand of Jesus with a nail print in the center to remind you of what he has done and what he continues to do for you. One of the books on the list of 100 books to read before you die that I am trying to work my way through is The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. And I read through it again this summer. And there are a couple of characters in the book who are about to embark on a dangerous journey. Just before they start, one of them says fearfully to the other, is it safe? And the leader turns and replies simply, no, let's go. Perhaps that is the situation we face when we wake up each day. We rise in the morning and look at the news to discover that our world continues to be rocked by threats and terror, by kidnapping and murder, by disease and famine, by injustice and racism. We might not even know that we do it, but each of us prays wordlessly to God, is it safe? And the reply comes back, no, let's go. Lead us, Heavenly Father, lead us o'er the world's tempestuous sea. And so he does, there to help us weather the unsafe world we live in. With faith and confidence in God, the chaos of life storms, ups and downs, the demons of disappointment, setbacks, injustice, and evil can be lived in certainty and reassurance. Though we might feel weak and broken and vulnerable and facing very real dangers, the divine power of God revealed in Jesus is there for us to draw on. If we flounder, help is at hand. As Jesus stretched out his hand to rescue Peter, I'm reminded of God's actions in Psalm 18. God reached down from on high and took me. He drew me out of mighty waters. He delivered me from my strong enemy and from those who hated me for they were too mighty for me. They confronted me in the day of my calamity, but the Lord, the Lord was my support. He brought me out into a broad place. He delivered me because he delighted in me. Yes, there are times in our lives when we may feel overwhelmed, when we may be out of our depth, when we feel we are drowning under a multitude of problems. Do not lose heart. For it is at times like these that Christ will draw us out of our turbulence and calm the storms of our life with an outstretched hand. While we may be not able to walk on water, walking through the storms of life is possible because of Jesus Christ. With faith and God-given courage, we can face the storms 
and navigate any darkness. So today, I invite you to receive the invitation that Jesus offers. Come to me. Thus provided, pardoned, guided, nothing can our peace destroy. Amen. join me in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell, the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Celebrating the coming of the one who brings the reign of God to all people, let us pray for the world God loves, the church God calls, and all people according to their needs, saying, Lord, in your mercy, and responding, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, you have chosen people throughout the history to be your people, to point to you to serve their neighbor. Help us respond in this time and place so we may truly be your people, point to you and serve our neighbors. Lord, in your mercy, Amen. hear our prayer. God of the church, we give thanks for walking with your people. May your church throughout the world reflect the light of your love into the dark places of life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of creation, all we see and have belongs to you. May our lives reflect the light of your care for all you have made. May we think beyond our own wants and desires, become more aware of the needs of others, and work for a future aglow with justice. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of mountaintops, we give thanks for times of inspiration and intimacy, of insight and awareness. Free us from wanting to cling to your gifts. Strengthen our faith to share it all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of low places, we thank you for your promise that nothing will separate us from your love. Give us courage to enter the valleys of life, ghettos and slums, housing projects and hospital rooms, food banks and women's shelters. Open our hearts to share your love with those who need it. We pray for the elderly faithful and especially those who are housebound in hospice or hospital. We thank you for their example and ask you to inc increase our love for one another across the age group. We pray for those who have finished their lives on earth in the peace of Christ 
and commit them to your everlasting care and protection. Our loved ones who have been near and dear to us, may they rest in peace in your, may they rest with you in their eternal peace. We ask you to keep us faithful as we continue our journey through this life. We prayerfully seek your grace amid COVID-19 here and overseas. We pray for those in need of healing. We pray to you with, to continue to strengthen and sustain all those who are serving in response. God, who shines the darkness, receive these prayers and the prayers of our hearts in the name of the one who is your light, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you once again for your support of St. Joseph's and I would like to offer this prayer over your gifts. Father, receive all we offer you this day and grant that we may be enriched by the gifts of the Spirit. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. And we pray as our Savior taught us, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom the power and the glory forever and ever amen Go forth now into the world in peace. Be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honor everyone. Love and serve the Lord rejoicing in the power of the Spirit and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and those you love this day and forevermore. Mm -hmm. Amen. And I offer up this prayer as well to those who are celebrating this week. O oh Lord, our Heavenly Father, you gladden our hearts with the yearly celebration of birthdays and anniversaries. Thank you for the mercies and gifts of the past and our hope for the future. Pour your love upon those who celebrate this week. May they grow in grace as their years increase and ever live so as to please you in the power of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you once again for joining us here at St. Joseph's. I hope that you have a safe week and keep the faith. Our final hymn is Guide Me, O Thou Great Jehovah.
I tread the verge of Jordan, bid my anxious fear subside. Yes, all death and hell's destruction, land me safe on Canaan's side. Songs of praises, songs of praises, I will ever give to thee. Now go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. God.